g partial g, which is an element of the prolongation space. And then a to s will map it to um, d rho g inverse at g times partial g minus sg. And that's the, that's the s logarithmic derivative. And it's an element, and we will think of it as an element of the uh, tangent space, or of the W algebra. And so a logarithmic differential equation will be an equation of the form d log s of x, an element of g, equals a inside the tangent value. So that's what I mean by a logarithmic differential equation. So now, um, how we characterize uh, uh, sort of generalized field extensions in, in terms of this is that, so there's a cohomological part, but uh, what it essentially reduces to is being able to look at this uh, finite dimensional um, differential algebraic group and embed it inside uh, uh, some algebraic D group and find an appropriate section. And um, in order to do this, there are two main steps. The first is to um, embed G into some algebraic um, group G tilde, um, and then equip G tilde with a section uh, that is sort of compatible with G in the following sense. Um, such that g tilde, um, I guess, such that if we look at the set of g in g tilde, such that um, s of g um, equals the derivative applied to g. In other words, that this section actually gives us the value of g, that this actually equals um, our original differential algebraic group g. And um, hmm? uh, I Yeah, okay. I guess because the, yeah, the way that we embed. Pretend it's embedded. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and I guess this object is usually called the sharp points of the algebraic figure. It's just the set such that this regular homomorphic section equals your uh, equals the differential operator applied to it. And so, um, essentially how you argue this is that you start off with G. Let's assume that it's affine, or we work in affine charts or something. Um, and so now, uh, if we look at G and we pick, if we, uh, yeah, so we look at G and then we look at its um, differential coordinate ring. Or in this case, let's just look at its differential function field. Let's look at generic data. Then, well, this is just going to be generated by G, partial G, partial square G, and so on. And, but after finitely many applications of um, partial, it all stabilizes. Just because it has finite transcendence degree. And so um, when we look here, this point gives us a way to embed G inside some higher uh, variety. So if we embed G inside some high enough power u to the l by g maps to delta kg. Then inside this higher power um, object, 
or inside this higher power of u, um, we can express all further powers of um, partial i of g in terms of these uh, smaller ones using rational functions. Right? And um, essentially by, uh, um, by looking at a nice enough, uh, I guess looking at a small enough neighborhood of g, that is actually regular. So, small enough. <laughs> we, they're so huge, these open sets. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, but there exists an open. Topology. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I guess not. Hmm? There are no small neighborhoods. Uh, oh, well, okay, so I mean, by, by this I just mean that um, if, if we express, um, so delta of oh, okay. tangent k of g. Yeah. I just want to write that as S of yeah. tangent k of, sure. of the right? And by picking, by moving off of some uh, yeah, it's fine. definable yeah, set, sure. this is actually going to be a regular section. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now, so we, we, have a, we have a regular section on some open neighborhood, and then we have a generic group law just given by the, the usual group law. So if I have g and h, I look at their kth prolongations, and then the multiplication is going to be a rational map in those k prolongations for a large enough k. And so using this Vey machinery, I can get an actual definable um, algebraic, or a rational, uh, a ra so it's a, a rational map over this chunk of the prolongation, hence giving me a definable algebraic group. And once I have the algebraic group, I have this embedding, and I take the Zorowski closure. Now, I move to a small enough neighborhood so that this section was actually um, a regular section, giving me the D variety structure that I wanted. So that's how we go from uh, uh, our group G to this G tilde. And then you can check that G S sharp is G. Um, and so now, um, I guess, uh, uh, that's the that's the characterization that I wanted to get. <laughs> so, so this construction here depends really on Billet's uh, embedding, or rather the, the, the theorem that says the n differential algebraic group is a embeddable in the algebraic group. Uh, but of course, you, you use the finite. Uh, yeah. So the argument is much easier in the finite dimensional case, right? right, right. right. Uh, because you don't have to look at pro varieties or anything. Right. So, I mean, this. But, but the yeah. idea generally is yeah. that for this simpler situation. Yes, yeah. And so, I mean, if you're looking at DC of 0m, then you can um, do the same argument to embed an infinite dimensional algebraic group that you're interested in into um, an algebraic group and try to mimic this. Um, the, uh, I guess, and the reason that we looked at only finite dimensional. Um, cases is that if this was an infinite dimensional uh, field extension, yeah. the um, let's see, uh, yeah, I guess uh, model theoretically um, that would mean that it's not in odd. So if it if it was infinite uh, dimensional, then um, you would not be able. It would not be. It would not be internal to any finite dimensional differential algebraic set, which would mean that um, the only thing it could be internal to is the whole field. But then, if you look at the definite, I guess we erase the definition. But if you're internal to only the whole field, the binding group you get from looking at the whole field is trivial, because the, you're looking at automorphisms of the whole field fixing the whole field. So that's why we reduce the finite dimensional case. Is that the you infinite dimensional case in DC of zero one is trivial. Yeah. yeah, for ordinary zero differential one, fields, it is sorry. trivial. But you can do a lot of this yeah, stuff um, in, the, in the context of DCF 0 m because the, the same embedding argument should give you an algebraic group, and you can still make sense of a lot of this. Um, anyways, um, I think I can end there, but thank you all so much. you can put it into the U upper L, there's no L there. Uh, oh. Uh, ah, no, you, well, so, so this yeah. won't work, but 
Uh, but Pillay's argument will still, still gives you definable groups in DCF. Yeah, yeah, you still can get the G2. Yeah, so it'll still be inside some U to the L. It just won't be inside it in this way, right? Because right. we the, still haven't understood Pillay's proof. Yeah. Yeah, so the... <laughs> the embed, that every it's, different algebraic <laughs> group can be embedded in an algebraic group. Yeah, I think... It, so the, the difference here is that... It's hard for us to understand. Here we know just sort of concretely where it stabilizes because it's bounded above exactly. by the transcendence yeah, degree, right? Here, though. But um, in the DCF0M case, um, in it, when, you, when you keep taking these prolongations and embedding, um, you get a smaller and smaller kernel. And then once you see that... You have to show, so there are two steps. If you show that the kernel of this prolongation is zero, then, um, yeah. and it, because it's strictly decreasing uh, by finiteness, uh, or by this condition on yeah. uh, uh, chains of subgroups, of different algebraic subgroups, then you get that after some finite stage, it has to be zero. And thus, you can embed it inside some finite prolongation. So um, that's the main difference. but. <laughs> uh, those steps are much trickier than in the finite dimensional yeah. case. Yeah. Because you're working, he, at least in his original proof, he works with pro algebraic varieties. Yeah. And even the, the proof that the structure is not empty is not trivial. So right. And at a certain stage, something is, um, he claims something is a rational map, and that's what we couldn't prove. But and I, we should look at it yeah. again. Yeah, because I mean, I think yeah. a lot of it is like a mix of compactness together with these descending chain arguments together with all these other finiteness results that uh, you find and use in model theory all the time, yeah. is my impression. Yeah. I guess we have the philosophy that, if, uh, which was Colchon's yeah. philosophy, that if you can prove it in model theory, you should be able to prove it in the model using the theory. <laughs> 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 but that need not hold. No. <laughs> Okay. Does this this doesn't prove show that uh, suppose you're looking at the finite dimensional differential algebraic groups? Are, does this show that they're all internal to the constants the way an algebraic groups groups would be? No. Um, so uh, certainly not because there are non um, non isoconstant algebraic B groups. Yeah. Because I mean, if uh, if that were the case. Then, no, what do you mean by not on isoconstant? In that there's no um, there's no d algebra isomorphism between the algebraic group with its section to some other algebraic group H with the zero section, which con which is the same thing as constant structure. Yeah, so an algebraic group H over the constants with the trivial section. But the group I'm thinking about is a subgroup of the multiplicative group of field. The multiplicative group is definitely defined over Q. But but it's not going to be isomorphic to um, it's not going to be uh, D algebraic D group isomorphic because it involves a, a compatibility with the, the section, right? So this section oh, there's the no way. Group? So I mean this diagram has to commute. Um, the different category. Yeah, we're looking at the category of algebraic D groups. Exactly. Yeah, and so. And then I'm looking so, at the differential algebraic subgroup of that. So we have our section S, tau G. Yeah. And so I mean, by isoconstant, I just mean tau H, where H is defined over C. Mm -hmm. And this section is the zero section, namely it maps H to. Oh, so H, H is a subgroup of zero. G. This is just any group. Yeah. And then... Uh, is that an algebraic group or a... Yeah, it's an al these are all algebraic groups. The multiplicative group is not iso-constant? Multiplicative group. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Wait, so, I'm, so, so it doesn't make sense to say that a group is iso-constant. It oh, makes sense yeah. to say that a algebraic group, algebraic B structure mm -hmm. on a group is iso-constant. What about the natural delta structure on GM? Um, then the that's the simplest group there is. The constants. I think that's right. It's defined. It is constant. defined over the constants. It definitely, it satisfies only the zero differential polynomial. Yeah. Um, the multiplicative group of the field. Yeah, but it's the generic point of GM is 
not going to be equipped with the zero because if you look at a generic point of GM inside inside you, then the differential generic point. Yeah, the differential generic point. Then um, it's going to be uh, zero. So if you're looking at the the structure that corresponds to the constants, that structure is the section where you take GM and map it h to h zero, which corresponds to the generic of the constant points of the multiplicative group. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's what that means. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then you can have every infinite group is not internal to the constants. Every infinite or, subgroup. Not every infinite. Every, in, every infinite subgroup of GM is not internal to the constants. Um, well, so. Which is a lot of them. Wait, wait, I, that means every subgroup containing the constant subgroup between the constant subgroup oh, yes. GM of C and GM, every single one of them, none of, none of those groups is uh, internal to the constant. Wait, I don't know if that's true because if you look at um, oh. so the the almost so I mean if you look at the equation partial squared x equals zero. Yeah, that, this is finite dimensional, and you look at the subgroup of GM intersected with this, don't you, I guess if you, multi, I guess if you multiply two of these, is it still, well, no, it's not. No, um, no. Yeah, really, no, it's that, certainly not. Really not. In yeah. fact, the simplest one, I, when yeah, I call I the heroic group. Uh, the of x. Yeah, the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you need uh, the inverse image of, of one of these beautiful g logs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then you look at, so all the groups are described in the ordinary case by uh, uh, an equation, a linear operator applied to d log. Ah, okay. And oh, those oh, oh. Are all I see. the infinite groups. I see. As a, so I guess in the algebraic yeah, case, it's just so a linear operator. That's right. Yes, yeah. gotcha. Okay. So, so that's the. Is, so none of these is, is internal to the constants, even though they're. Ruthlessly finite dimensional. Yeah, and I think that's the point. Yeah, that's yes. interesting. Yeah, yeah, the point is that there are lots of so no groups. There's no binding group or anything. Well, there, there is, there, there is. can be a binding. I mean, so binding groups, the point is that if we have. Oh, there is a binding There exists. Like, for, there for, for, I mean, there's an inverse theorem that I'll say that for every differential or fine dimensional differential algebraic subgroup G, okay. there exists K and F yeah. such that yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the case. So you still have some kind of structure. Yeah, you have plenty of structure. Structure, and I mean, structure. The point is that structure. the only structure that happens is d log structure. Yeah. That Pillay's right. theory right. is that all the structure comes from d log right. equations. Right. That's that's oh, Pillay's or that's the result. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah, so we'll move to the other one. Okay, let's <laughs>